morning and welcome to WWDC 2018. We're going to get started with iOS. Our next big release of iOS is, you guessed it, iOS 12. We are doubling down on performance. iOS 12 will be available on all the same devices as iOS 11. This is the iPhone 6 Plus. Now on that device, iOS 12 delivers a number of improvements across common operations. You'll see that apps launch up to 40% faster. The keyboard can come up up to 50% faster, and you can slide to take a photo at up to 70% faster. We created a new file format for AR. It's called USDZ. You can use USDZ across the system, from the Files app to Safari, to even sharing them over messages and mail. And what's great is you can place these 3D objects into the real world. We're introducing a new app and it's called Measure. Tapping and dragging out a line like that. And check that out, it's a measurement. What I can do with Measure is it automatically detects the dimensions of that photo. I can just tap and get, oh yeah, cute little baby, wasn't I? And you can get measurements just like that. ARKit 2 delivers advances with improved face tracking, more realistic rendering, and support for 3D object detection but probably best is the support for shared experiences. Now this delivers true multi-user augmented reality. You and the people around you will be able to, able to see your own perspective on a common virtual environment. Next, I'd like to turn to photos. In iOS 12, search now starts working for you even before you start typing with search suggestions. And with For You, you have all of your memories, those great memory movies, but more like featured photos, highlighting a photo that you took on this day in past years, and effect suggestions, for instance, suggesting looping a live photo or applying a new portrait effect to one of your portrait photos. Imagine you've gone out for a great dinner with some friends and you took some photos. You'll see that Photos is even recommending a set of photos that, from that set that you might want to share and suggest who you might want to share them with, based in part by the people that appeared in the photos. When your friend receives them, their phone searches their libraries for other photos they took at that event and suggests that they share them back to you. So next, let's turn to Siri. Siri works with many third-party apps for things like messaging, ride sharing, uh, and payments. But we wanted to make Siri able to do much more for you. And we're doing that by taking advantage of the power of apps with a new feature we call Shortcuts. Well, the Tile app can expose the option to add a shortcut to Siri. You can assign your own phrase, such as, I lost my keys, would be a good choice. And when you then say it, Siri will automatically activate Tile and show you right in the Siri UI, start ringing your Tile just like that. You could say game time to get your team's schedule from Team Snap, or help me relax to kick off a meditation, or order my groceries to order your usual. Well now, Siri can suggest right on your lock screen that you do that. You tap on it, and you can place the order right from there. Or if when you get to the gym, you use Aptive to track workouts, well that suggestion will appear right on your lock screen. And this even works when you pull down into search. You'll get great suggestions, like say you're running late for a meeting, well Siri will suggest you text the meeting organizer. Or when you go to the movie, suggest that you turn on Do Not Disturb. That's just being considerate. And remind you to call grandma on her birthday. Just tap and it'll dial the call for you. Now, we think we're all gonna really enjoy using shortcuts. And so we went a step further. We wanted to let you create your own shortcuts as users by, of multiple steps across multiple applications. And we're doing it with a new Shortcuts app. So with the Shortcuts app, you could do something like create a, a shortcut for surf time, and it could go get you the surf report, look up the current weather, get you the ETA to the beach, and even create a reminder for you to put on sunscreen when you get there. Whenever I leave work, I can just say, heading home. You will get there in one hour. I sent a message to Cheryl. Your thermostat is set to 70 degrees, and I turned on the fan playing KQED radio. 
with iOS 12. CarPlay will also support third-party navigation apps. We're announcing a comprehensive set of built-in features to help you limit distraction, focus, and understand how you're spending your time. We're introducing Do Not Disturb During Bedtime, where all you'll see is this, nothing to get you spun up. In the morning when you wake up, you're gently eased into your day, you can tap when you want to start confronting those notifications. <laughs> now we have a great new mode where when you press in to Do Not Disturb and Control Center, you can set an ending time for Do Not Disturb for when you leave a particular location or when an event ends on your calendar. So we're enabling what we call instant tuning for notifications right from the lock screen. You can press in to a notification, and from there you can decide to send future notifications from that app directly to Notification Center, bypassing your lock screen, or turn them off altogether. And Siri will even help by suggesting that you turn off notifications for apps that you're no longer using. We're bringing to iOS support for grouped notifications. Notifications are grouped not just by app, but also by topic and thread. It gives you a great overview of the notifications you've received. Screen time empowers you with both insight and control over how you spend your time. And it starts with reports. Every week, you get a weekly activity summary that details how you used your iPhone or iPad. In your activity report, you see an app where you might want to be spending a little bit less time. Well, you can set your own limit. And then during the day, when you're using the app, you'll receive a helpful notification letting you know time is almost up. <laughs> and this year, we're taking Animoji to a whole new level, the breakthrough new technology we call tongue detection. <laughs> That's right. Now you can make your favorite Animoji do this. <laughs> With Memoji, you can create your very own personalized Animoji. These Animoji can look like you or the real you. We are bringing fun effects into the messages camera. And now we have an all new way for you to use Animoji. I can apply my favorite Animoji right here live. Next, let's talk about FaceTime. We're introducing group FaceTime. You'll be able to FaceTime with two people, three people, actually up to 32 simultaneous participants. FaceTime is now integrated into messages, so you can quickly go from a group chat you have going directly in to a group FaceTime. So it's this beautiful FaceTime UI. We have these big, gorgeous tiles right up front where you see some of the leaders of the FaceTime team. And down at the bottom, there's an area we call the roster that contains everybody else. And of course, I'm right there in the lower right-hand corner. We've also brought the fun effects to the FaceTime camera. I can just tap in and I have access to an emoji, filters, and all of my sticker packs and everyone else on the call can apply them too. Wow, now hey. this is the future. Hey Craig, check this out. I'm a comic book koala. Next up, we'd like to talk about the Apple Watch. In WatchOS 5, you can challenge any of your activity sharing friends to a seven day competition whenever you would like. And if they accept, you each try to win the week by closing your rings and earning points. We're adding automatic workout detection. So your Apple Watch will now offer to start tracking a workout if it senses that you're beginning one. Introducing walkie talkie. You just press to talk, and then your friend can hear your voice just like a walkie talkie. And we're also adding Siri shortcuts. Those shortcuts you saw coming to iOS 12 are also going to be available in watchOS. So in addition to getting relevant information, you'll also receive predicted shortcuts right on the Siri watch face. So now you have the ability to view web content in mail or messages. You can even tap on that link Yes, and to easily view things like menus here. And while we think full browsing doesn't make sense on your wrist, there are times you get content and you'd like to see it right in the moment, and now you'll be able to do that in watchOS 5. And now, with watchOS 5, we're giving you even more to listen to. Next up is Apple TV. Apple TV 4K is bringing you the latest in audio technology. 
Cosmos. The Apple TV 4K is the only streaming player to be both Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos certified. And I'm really excited to announce that here in the US, Charter Spectrum will be coming to Apple TV late this year. And they'll be able to use Siri and the TV app to get access to their TV service, not only on Apple TV, but on iPhone and iPad as well. So now, if you're on your TV provider's broadband network, we'll securely and automatically unlock all the supported apps included with your TV service. No credentials needed, it just works. Charter Spectrum. <laughs> this is really awesome. And Charter Spectrum will be the first to support zero sign-on and we'll be adding more providers over time. Next up is the Mac. Our next release of Mac OS is Mac OS Mojave. So here we are live in Mac OS Mojave. And I'd like to show you a new side of Mojave. We call it dark mode. And it's so great for pros. It makes photographic content absolutely pop off the screen. So now in Mojave, we have a really great solution and we call it desktop stacks. And it can be arranged by kind, by date, or even by tag. And you'll notice that the quick actions area is contextual. So it shows me create PDF as an option. I'm gonna click create PDF, and it's gonna assemble all of these photos into a PDF just like that. But what's really great is these actions are also customizable. So you can create automator actions and assign them to buttons here inside of Finder. So you'll notice that now that I have this PDF selected, I have an option to run a custom automator action that I've created called Watermark PDF. When I click it, my custom action runs and my document is watermarked. When it comes to capturing content, we all walk around with one of the best content capture devices in the world in our pockets, our phones. And so we wanted to take advantage of continuity to bring that to the Mac with a feature we call continuity camera. Well, when I select this object, I can choose to take a photo. And I want, want you to watch what happens when I select this to my phone. It automatically, immediately lights up, ready to take a photo. So I can take one like this. And when I do, I can select use photo and it appears directly in my document. I'd like to turn to apps. We are bringing news to the Mac. We also have stocks coming to the Mac. We're also bringing voice memos to the Mac. Finally, thrilled to announce Home is coming to the Mac as well. And we believe that your private data should remain private. Mac OS already pr provides API level protections for things like contacts, photos, calendar, and reminders. But now in Mojave, we're extending these protections to include your camera and your microphone, as well as protecting sensitive parts of your file system, like your mail database, your message history, and your backups. And all of this is protected by default for any app that you run on the system. Next, I wanna to turn to some great enhancements to Safari. We've all seen these, these like buttons and share buttons, and these comment fields. Well, it turns out these can be used to track you, whether you click on them or not. And so this year, we are shutting that down. 